In Canada, you're only going to find the Corsair with Lincoln's intelligent all-wheel drive. So what that means is, as the computer's brain recognizes that a wheel needs power, it's going to divert it to whatever wheel is necessary. Down in the States, you're going to find front-wheel drive standard with the intelligent all-wheel drive optionally in all trim levels of the vehicle. So different options available there. There are a series of different wheel choices that are available with varying sizes, depending on if you're in just the regular, the regular model of the vehicle, so the base, if you're in the reserve, or in the Grand Touring. We've got our little charge door off to the side, and this does support level one or level two charging. Level one charging, you're looking like 10 to 11 hours-ish roughly to charge. Comparatively, the level two charging, you're gonna be about three to four hours, give or take, but it's ultimately gonna depend on what output you're looking at, so what your kilowatt hour output is. On top of that, this thing does have regenerative braking, and then there is even a preserve EV mode for one of our drive modes where it's going to force just the gas engine to be working, which means that it can charge up the electric side of things as we go. And the only time it's gonna take you out of that mode is if you try to gun it a tiny little bit. So if you don't really care about driving fast, you can rely strictly on that electric mode with your gas engine as a backup. So this thing is powered by either a 2.5 liter Atkinson hybrid or a two liter turbocharged engine, which has 250 horsepower and 275 pound feet of torque this year. Or this one, which has a combined horsepower rating of 266 horsepower. Now, the torque is technically not published for the Grand Touring model. It wasn't published this year so far, wasn't published last year either. So if we look at the Ford equivalent, which would be the escape plug-in hybrid, I'd hazard a guess it's probably somewhere in the same ballpark. So you're looking at 155 pound-feet of torque, somewhere in that ballpark, but at least 266 horsepower, which is pretty respectable. You do have the option right from your dealer to get a prepaid maintenance plan to take care of all of your regularly scheduled maintenance, but you want to make sure you're doing that to maintain your manufacturer's warranty, which is a little bit nicer than the Ford equivalent. There's a lot of standard technology that you're going to find inside of the Corsair. You're at least going to have LED headlamps, but there's also the option for ones with dynamic bending. So it's going to follow you left and right as you're turning the wheel, and it's also speed dependent. So as you go faster, slower, that's going to adjust how bright things are to illuminate the road in front of you. And this one also has the forward sensing system. So the features that you get are going to depend on the trim level of the vehicle you choose, so whether that's the base, the reserve, or the Grand Touring, but there are sub packages in each one of those. Like the Grand Touring has the 300, the 301, or this 302A, which has pretty much everything in the vehicle with the exception of a few things. Like this one has the option of massage seats, which are beautiful, but Lincoln has streamlined things a little bit to make the ordering process a little bit easier. So the features that you get are very package specific this time, but there aren't a ton of like added add-on packages. It's a lot of things lumped together now instead. I really like the new web design for the grill. And because this is the Grand Touring model, the Lincoln logo right in the very middle has blue on the outside of it. This one has the front facing camera, there are side view mounted cameras and a backup camera for a full 360 view. Back end of the Corsair has a lot of similar highlights that you saw along the front end. There's a glossy part of the lower part of the bumper, but other than that, it's pretty much body colored throughout. There are some black and metallic highlights that run throughout the mid part there, just underneath the Lincoln badge. Now this thing is going to have the reverse sensing system regardless, so it doesn't matter which trim level of the vehicle that you look at. And then you also do have the option for the tow package right from the factory again. The two liter turbo and the 2.5 liter hybrid both have towing capacity up to 3,000 pounds. So that's fairly impressive. Inside of the Corsair, you're going to have a power liftgate standard across the entire vehicle lineup. But there's also the option for a foot activated power liftgate. Oh, up it goes, which is always a nice thing. So you're at least gonna get a power lift gate inside of the Corsair. There is the option for the hands-free foot activated instead. But I mean, realistically, you can use the key fob if you wanted to open it that way. There's a button on the outside, just to the left-hand side of the steering wheel. There's a button there that you could also press. There's a 20-foot cable that's included in the Grand Touring, and the cable does support level one and level two charging, which is always a nice thing. Now, a few other things. Off to the left side, there's a 12-volt power point. Off to the right, there are a few buttons in order to be able to lower the seats. 
so we could button press in order to power release, but we have to manually lift the seats back up again. But I mean, when we do that, it opens things up so, so nicely. Like, there's so much space back here, which is great. And the measurements that I use are assuming you've got the driver's seat set up for someone who's six feet tall. So you do have the flexibility, obviously, of moving the seat up a little bit if you need to. Now, taking the charge cable out for a second, let's take a peek because we've got our just carpeted liner here. There is the option for the thermoplastic rubber tray, and this one has the floor liners as well, right from the factory, so you can spray them down in order to clean up, clean up a mess a little bit easier. And then pulling this tray out, there also is the mini spare tire, which is going to be standard inside of the Corsair. Because this is the hybrid, a lot of the hybrid components are actually right underneath the spare tire. So inside of the hybrid, your jack is off to the left. You've got the white spigot and things like that off to the top left hand side there as well. But if you were inside of the regular gas engine, you're looking at the jack that's going to be just underneath the spare tire instead. And then you have a little bit more functional storage space back there. Not a ton, just a little bit. Filling up fuel inside of the Corsair is also straightforward and it's along our driver's side. And that doesn't matter if we're in the regular gas engine or the Grand Touring. But there's a little bit of a difference between looking at the hybrid versus the regular gas in that in the hybrid, this thing is locked, which has just has to do with depressurization. So in order to get into it, all we have to do just to the left hand side of the steering wheel, there's a button you're going to push in order to pop it open. So straightforward there and it's a capless system. Now, it doesn't matter if you're in the Grand Touring, so the hybrid or the regular gas engine. Minimum manufacturer's recommendation is just your regular 87 octane. Having said that, and I say in all my videos, the horsepower and torque specs that are achieved under the hood of all Lincoln vehicles are done using a premium fuel. You're looking at a 94 octane. Having said that, you don't need to use it. Regular 87 octane is all you need to use inside of this thing. The 2.5 liter hybrid, 100% you're gonna be fine running that 87, but if you're running the two liter turbo, you might wanna even try running a 91 octane or a 93 for a bit to see how much more you enjoy it. Cause I guarantee you're gonna love it a little bit more. The hybrid, you're not gonna notice quite as much, but that two liter turbo loves her some premium. There is the option for crossbars, roof rack carriers, and things like that, depending on what your own personal needs are. But size wise, this is pretty nice and it's got some pretty cool standard technology on the outside too. So there's the five digit number pad. So if you wanna get into the vehicle without your key fob, you can do that. You wanna use phone as a key, that's also available as an option. Side view mirrors are power folding and they also feature the blind spot monitoring system. So as somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's gonna highlight orange and let you know. On top of that, it has intelligent access. So you can push on the outside of the door there in order to be able to lock, and that's across all four doors. And then as long as you've got the key fob on you, you can slide your hand in in order to open up. The first row of the Corsair looks incredible, and that's because it got an upgrade for the 2023 model year. And I love what Lincoln's done with it. Can easily adjust the backrest, move the seat forwards, backwards. You can go up or down with it. And then these two, if you've got the 24 way perfect position seats, so the one with some of the hot massage seats, we can also adjust each individual leg cushion, which is kind of neat. If yours didn't have the 24 way seats, you just wouldn't have these available. And then from there, you've got three individual seat memory profiles, but this one, because we're in the massage seats, we've got this additional button. And when we push that, you can see there it hops us into this setting. So you've got a few options that are available. So you can adjust individual parts of the seat. If you want it to hug certain parts of the back, you can do that. If you want it to hug you a little bit more to give you like a sport bucket seat instead, you can adjust what's going on with your leg cushions on the outside there too. Or you push the massage button in order to get massage seat capabilities, which is really, really nice. And you've got a few different options that are available there. So lower rolling, upper rolling, full relax, you can also press this in to get three individual strengths for the seat there too for the massage. You can turn it off and the massage seats are good for the first row passenger and the driver's seat. So we obviously press the driver's seat button there, but if you were to push the one on the passenger seat instead, that would give you the passenger seat selections instead. Uh, if you don't have a 24 way massage seats, you are just looking at a 10 way adjust for the driver, eight way adjust for the passenger seat. And then one nice thing, 
you've got multi-way adjustable headrest. So you can go up and down with it, but you can also go forwards, backwards with it as well. And that's the same for the driver and for the passenger side. So you can just make it that little bit more unique. There are so many different options that are available inside of this thing. So 10 speaker audio system standard. This one has the 14 speaker Revel audio system instead. And I mean, hold on, let's go through because this thing sounds really good. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's so gonna be a good day. Wake up. That's literally not even at half volume. That's turned up like a third. Like the audio inside of this 14 speaker Revel is amazing. And it's because there are so many speakers along the door. You've got one up on the dash there as well. Series of different ones in the back end. It is really, really nice. And like just a full immersive audio experience, which is incredible. Taking a peek at the steering wheel as well as the cluster screen inside of the Lincoln Corsair. But this one, it's pretty much as fully loaded as it's going to get. So loaded across the board, I did mention it's the hybrid version of the vehicle. So you can see along the left side that there is the range that's available. But uh, let's dive into it. I'm going to explain everything that you need to know. So first thing, the wheel feels premium, really nice. And it is going to be a heated steering wheel. You can see the heated steering wheel button right on the Sync 4 media screen. So you can easily toggle that on or off as necessary. And on top of that, the wheel for the most part in the Corsair is going to be power telescoping. So just by our left knee, we can go forwards, backwards, up and down with the wheel, get that perfect position. And then one nice thing, once you have the steering wheel set up, you've got the side view mirror set up and you've got your driver's seat set up, you can press and hold either one, two or three along the door in order for it to remember your own personal profile, which is always a nice thing. But I mean, the wheel does feel nice and premium. Oh, this is good. All right. Now, Along the top left hand side, this button is going to be our voice command prompt. So we'd be able to do things like change songs, radio stations, you can adjust the climate settings and things like that. I honestly recommend getting a hang, getting the hang of all of these different features. It's really, really useful to be able to just push and hold and be able to change the climate control rather than having to fiddle with the screen. You can turn on your heated ventilated seats, heated steering wheel and things like that using the voice command prompt. So it's really useful from that perspective. Moving down, there are a series of different buttons that are available. So the pad along the left side is going to be our volume rocker. So we can easily adjust out. You can change between songs, radio stations, things like that. So if we turn the audio on, perfect. I'm just going to jump into audio for us here. So you can see we've got audio selected now. We can change between our different presets by going left and right. So you can see we're adjusting presets there. But if we're on, let's say, AM, FM or Sirius XM, if you do a press and hold instead, you'd be able to seek out that way. So it is kind of nice that you've got that flexibility. It's not going to be a seek in the sense that it's just going to continue to seek until it finds a station. You do have to press and hold in order for it to seek out, but you do have that flexibility. And then you can go up and down in order to adjust your volume as well. This button here is going to be for the adaptive cruise control system. So you can see it's turned on and it's also highlighted some buttons along the very bottom now. So it is kind of nice, like some of these buttons, they're more or less like a hideaway type of a feature instead. It's really, really cool the way that Lincoln's designed this. But looking at the adaptive cruise system, once it's turned on, you've got a few options. So once you get up to speed, you can set your cruise control. So plus or minus there, so you can increase or decrease one kilometer or one mile per hour at a time. If you feel the need to hit the brake yourself or you've come to a complete stop, you could resume on top of that just by pushing this resume button once you're moving again. Along the right side, you've got cancel and then distance indicators. So how close or far away do you want to be from the vehicle that's in front of you? I want you to think of it like that one Mississippi, two Mississippi rule. So general rule of thumb, I like to keep it at level two, and that gives you a pretty safe distance between you and the car that's in front of you. There is the cancel button along that side on top of that. So if you're driving, you can hit the brake or you can just hit cancel if you wanted to do that instead. Now this one obviously just has the, what well, has the adaptive cruise control system. But through the media screen, you could go to features, driver assistant settings. And then you've also got cruise control there, which gives us a few options. So if you're a bigger fan of just normal cruise control, you could select that out if you want to. We've got adaptive cruise, 
lane centering is an incredible one because what the wheel is going to do is if you are going across a bend it's going to literally keep the wheel and turn the wheel for you in order to follow the bend in the road as long as it recognizes the lane markings so it's a really really great feature that this thing has i absolutely love it but it's very different from the lane keeping system which is a button on the tip of the stick so lane centering is going to keep you perfectly balanced in your lane turning as you go versus the lane keeping system if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling it's either going to nudge the wheel it's going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake or it's going to do a little bit of both so those two go in hand, they'll hand in hand together you've got predictive speed and then also lane change assist one of the cool things about lane change assist is when you're driving, I believe it's up to 45 or 50 kilometers an hour is the minimum speed you have to be going, but you hit your signal left, right, whatever the case may be. And it's going to utilize the blind view monitors in order to make sure nobody's there. And it's going to change the lanes for you automatically. It is a really, really cool system. But if you want to walk through on how the adaptive cruise control system works in person, check down in the description below. I've put together a comprehensive walkthrough there. Along the right side, you've got a series of other buttons, and that's going to let us navigate what's going on through the cluster screen. But before we get to that, a few things. There are paddle shifters, so minus on the left, plus on the right-hand side, so you'd be able to easily adjust what gear you're in if you'd like to. Along the right side, it's going to be for your windshield wipers. So got, you've got your front window wipers going, adjust what's going on at the speed there, and then on the tip of that stick, there's also another one in order to get your rear windshield wiper going. You're going to pull in towards you for the front wiper fluid, and then you're going to push away in order to get your rear window wiper fluid going. So very straightforward from that perspective. Now, I did mention a series of buttons along this side. So let's zoom in a tiny little bit so you can see what's going on. And up you go. All right, and what we're going to do is push this button, and what that's going to do is jump us between a few pages. So you've got trip one counter, tire pressure, EV coach, and then calming screen. I did mention this is the Grand Touring, which is why we've got a few of these different options that are available. But I do, honestly, I love the calming screen just because it stretches things out. Look, look at this, watch this. Ah, so nicely. I mean, obviously, if you weren't in the electric or the hybrid, I should say, you wouldn't have the kilometers there for electric, but you would still have your gas mileage along the left side. And then you've got your speedometer off to the right hand side there instead. But a few other things to point out. You've got total distance driven along the bottom left hand side. Also, you've got your current gear that you're going, that you're in right there, whether or not the lane keeping system is toggled on or off. So with it toggled off, watch for a second there, and it kind of tweaks the look a little bit more. So it's dynamic in the sense that depending on what features you have enabled, disabled, etc., it's going to change the overall look, layout, and functionality of the screen here, which is kind of neat. You've got your current speed along the right-hand side any sort of warning messages. So the vehicle's on and my seatbelt's not plugged in. And then because we're charging up right now, you can see that we've got the charge warning there. What's currently going on with the outside temperature and then lift you up a little bit so you can see, there we go, perfect. So two more things. You've also got what's going on with your current direction there. And then what station you're currently listening to. So there are quite a few different things that are available. Now, moving through the different screens. So we've got music off to the left-hand side. So you've got AM, FM, Sirius XM. So we can go through and we can change out if you'd like to. Moving back again, you've got your different presets that you can go between on top of that. So once your presets are set through the media screen, you can then go through and you can adjust whatever preset or move to whatever preset you want to. But one really nice thing is that you'd also have the flexibility of oop, this button here, pushing in order to be able to change your radio station that way. So if you wanted to tune to like FM 94.9, whatever the case may be, you can say that and it'll change stations for you. Moving back. And one thing you're going to notice as we jump between different screens is that the home button, so the pages button goes to a home button instead, which brings us back there. So it's a little bit more of a dynamic button. So we go back, forward, etc. go back into music or we hop back out you can go back into music or you can press the home icon. So there are a few different ways you can get back home. Off to the right side would be phone. So phone's not currently connected, but if there was one connected, you'd be able to look through your contacts and make phone calls and things like that. Moving into navigation settings now. So you've got your home address. If you have that one set up, and again, that's set up through the multimedia screen. Previous destinations, if you've been to multiple locations, so you've got your favorites, and then point of interest icons. So if you wanted to find gas stations, food, things like that. So it's really neat. So let's go through and let's go to Pizza Force. Ha <laughs> ha. Treats, Harvey's, Subway, Tim Hortons. There we go. Nice and Canadian Obey of me. Traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. 
Why, thank you. Make a U-turn if possible and then turn right. Why, thank you. So you can see there, you've got what's currently going on in the direction. So it's not a full map view, but I mean, still, that looks pretty nice. Go back home. So it is really cool that you've got that option right through the head cluster screen. And then even in the head up display, when you've got a map going, hold on, I don't know if you're gonna be able to, oh, you might just be able to see it. All right, hold on. Look at this. Oh, is it going crazy? There we go. Look at this. So you've got your head up display there as well. So you can see what's currently going on there. So we've got our current map going, what gear we're in, how fast we're going, what our road speed is, current temperature, and then our current time as well. So it's really, really cool that we've got that available as an option. And I mean, the head up display inside of this thing looks really, really sharp. All right, and jumping back down again. And if we go up, right back to our navigation, or yeah, back to our navigation menu again, you can go cancel route. So let's, oh, uh, let's go back up and cancel the route out. And that just brings us back to this main screen again. And same idea, we can push this in order to get to different modes. Back to the calming screen is going to just bring us back to this base screen instead. There we go. Perfect. So much better. And now next up, last one is going to be our settings. So along the very bottom right hand side there, we're just going to push down and that's going to bring us to this one instead. So ton of options available. So whether or not you want the head up display on, yes or no, and then head up display menu, we'll actually, uh, let's do that right now. So head up pos position, you've got brightness and a few other things that you can adjust. So let's zoom in a tiny little bit there. Oh, Chaos. All right, there we go. So moving through, you can see a few different things that are available. So you can adjust the brightness. So I'm just going to go max brightness, but you can adjust it out from there. Honestly, it's easiest to see when it's full max brightness there. So definitely recommend going that route. Moving back, you've also got your head up to display position. So if you want to adjust your vertical position, you could. So you can bring the head up display up or down if you want to, to make it a little bit easier for you to see, just based off of your height. And then you can also rotate the image as well. So if you are kind of, if you sit a little bit sideways, you could also go up and down that way if you wanted to adjust that too, which is kind of neat. Moving out, you've also got what content's currently showing up. So do we want to have our current gas mileage? Do we want driver assistance settings showing there? And that's really the basics. Like if we've got the adaptive cruise control system going, you can see that pops up nicely in the head up display there. Really, really nice. And then as you adjust, whether you're closer or further away from the vehicle in front of you, that's also going to show up there. So, I mean, that, I honestly, I think that looks really, really nice. I love what Lincoln's done with the head-up display inside of this thing. And then you do have the flexibility. If you just don't want to use the head-up display anymore, you can toggle it off. And it's just off. And then simply toggling it back on again. So it is really, really nice that we've got this available as an option. And back down again. Let's move into display menu. So what information screens do we want showing up? Calming screen, trip one, two counter, this trip, fuel economy, tire pressure. Do you want to have your seatbelt showing, power distribution, electric economy, things like that. So there's so many different options that are available. And I'll show you where that go, uh, goes in just a second. But another thing to point out, I'm just going to toggle a few of these things off. Speed, we can have mix miles, kilometers per hour, etc. If you want to permanently lock it out to one or the other instead of having the split, that's all done through the multimedia screen there as well in our vehicle settings. And then you've also got vehicle history, so driving history. You could press and hold OK in order to reset. And on any of these values, if you need to reset, all you're going to do, you see the OK button there off the bottom right side, you can just move off to the right, you hold it for a second, timer comes up, and it's reset it for us. And that's the same for everything. So if we hop back out, you've got all of your different settings there. Now, if we push the pages button again, that's gonna bring us to a few different counters. So we added a few other ones in. You've got power distribution in there now, electric fuel economy and things like that. So one really nice thing is that you do have the flexibility through any of these things for the most part to reset. So your trip counter, if you wanted to reset that, same idea, you're in your trip counter. So all you're gonna do, press and hold this pages button there in order to be able to reset your fuel economy. So certain ones, you're gonna have an okay button. Other ones, you hit the pages button in order to be able to reset instead. But really straightforward, you've got your brake coach, oil life. So if you're changing oil yourself, you could reset that way. And then also neutral towing. So if you're gonna to be towing your Corsair behind a trailer, whatever the case may be, you do have neutral tow mode available there as an option. 
This is the new Sync4 Media screen that you're gonna find inside of the Lincoln Corsair. And I've gotta say, it looks really, really nice. Like I love what they've done with this. Beautiful. Now a few things. This is the same screen you're gonna find across the entire Corsair lineup. But one big difference is that the one I'm sitting in is actually the Grand Touring model. So it's the hybrid, which is why we've got a few other things like battery percentage and a few other things that you're just not going to find inside of the regular version of the Corsair. So if you have the gas version, you're obviously just not going to have departure comfort, charge settings and a few other things. But all the other features are going to be the exact same. So let's dive into it. Along the very top, you've got your home icon. So whatever other screen you're on. Search for you just press the home icon there and that's just going to bring you right back home again. Clock along the very top so you can adjust your clock settings there if you want to. You can also get to it from your settings that we'll get into as we dive in a little bit deeper. Moving back, auto cabin refresh that's available there as well. So auto air refresh and a few other things. So it's actually kind of neat because we can dive into some other settings right from this, which is actually new. That's really cool. So there are some different things that you can jump right into. That was... That's really neat. I love that they've added this in. Cool. Auto air refresh. So you can see there what times it's planning on doing the refresh there. You can force a cabin refresh if you want to. So really nice. And that's essentially just, it's a particulate filter. So it's just going to filter it out and give it a nice clean scent, which is amazing. Moving to your climate control settings and things like that. So there are quite a few different things that we could do. And then we're just going to hide it along the very bottom. So if you've got a phone wirelessly charging, let's see, this is going to be the, the test. Oh, neat. Okay. So that's a wireless charge symbol. So if you've got a phone wirelessly charging, that's going to pop up. Really, really cool. Along the very top there, if we've got data transfer going on, if you're connected to Wi-Fi, and then current outside temperature. Factory navigation is going to be standard inside of this thing. And then you can hook up through either Android or iPhone devices on Apple in order to hook, uh, use Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze, or on Android devices in order to use Google Maps. But as I mentioned, factory navigation is standard. You can go full screen instead if you want to. And I mean the screen, super responsive, which is nice. Reset view. Along the very top, you can go for map orientation. So you want to do adjust out to 2D, 3D, etc voice so as we're coming up to turns do you want to have a voice and a tone strictly a voice or strictly a tone so you've got a few different options these things are grayed out because i don't have the features enabled as of right now so you do need to have your connected navigation active do we want to avoid certain things on route so highways toll roads tunnels and things like that you can show different things on maps so if you wanted to show attractions coffee shops hotels and things like that and then some added settings so different things for map routing preferences. So do you want 2D, 3D map? Do you want the vehicle to reroute when a faster route's available? And do you want it to confirm or just automatically do it? Honestly, that's probably the best way to go is just have it automatically reroute when a quicker route's available. It's essentially like using Waze right through the screen instead. What type of route do we want? The fastest or the most eco-friendly? Moving back, you've got breadcrumbs. One of the cool things about breadcrumbs, I always just recommend keeping it on because as you travel to different locations, you can kind of see as we go through, hold on, let's go to the map for a second. Back, back. You can see what places we've been. So you've got little dots that are showing up all the way throughout. So that's where this vehicle's traveled to so far. Honestly, I really love this because if you're in a new area, you can log in here. You can kind of see where you've gone. If you're going off road, you're not really sure where you've been. You can adjust the breadcrumbs out. So it is really, really cool that we've got that available as an option. I always just recommend keeping it on. You could turn it off too if you really wanted to. Predictive destinations because we haven't traveled anywhere yet that can't predict where we potentially are going to want to be going. Privacy options. So if you want to clear all of this information out or factor or reset, we could do that as well basic about information. So are you currently up to date? But one thing I like is that even if we, whenever things we see, if we're not really 100% sure, you can just hit this little information icon and it tells you what it's all about. So predictive destinations, deliver map updates and things like that. Moving back, is it? That, yeah, that's all for the settings. Perfect. All right, next up, searching for addresses is very straightforward. You can go to recent, saved, gas stations, food, attractions, and so many other things. I love it. Let's look for some coffee. All right, and nice and Canadian of me. Let's go to a Tim Hortons. I chose one that's a bit further away for a reason. So we can now save it as a destination if we want to. See what parking's available. 
four by four roads, we could also include that. This one is if there are alternative routes that are available. So we can select between the, the route that we want to take, and then you can hit start there if you want to. You can also circle in and zoom in on the endpoint. You could go back to a split screen instead or back to your full screen. And then once you've got the route that you want, I'm just gonna hit start. Make a U-turn if possible and then turn right. Okay, so we have the flexibility now to start driving. You can also add in a waypoint. So if you wanted to stop in between and maybe grab some gas first, we can do that. So it's gonna tell us which way we wanna go. So we're gonna add that to the trip. Make a U-turn if possible and then turn right. Straightforward. Pressing this button gives us our full map overview. Back to our other view. And then we can also mute out. So if you don't want to get upcoming or upcoming turns, so that turn by turn direction, we can just turn that off if we want to, or just cancel. You can go to the next step, or you can cancel the whole trip. Now it obviously gave me the next step option because I had two points selected. But if you only had one point, one end point in mind, you just wouldn't have had that option. It just would have canceled the route out for you instead. You can go to your recent destinations. So you can see there we've been to a few different places and then your favorites. So as of right now, nothing's been favorited. So what I'm gonna do, let's go here, and we're gonna save Tim Hortons as a favorite. So we go back into our favorites now, and you've got this address that's now been saved. So if we go ac across, so we could, if we want to just press, and that's gonna let us navigate. But if we shoot across to the side, we can delete it, or we can edit it. So if you wanted to give it, your, give it a personal name, you'd have the flexibility to be able to do that. So if you have different addresses set up for, for kids, for family, different work and home addresses and things like that, you've got that flexibility or you can just delete and it just deletes it that way very simply. But we can search for addresses a ton of different ways. You can type in destination this way if you wanted to type in a physical address. You can search by GPS coordinates and it's gonna go latitude, longitude. So, lat long, so latitude first and then longitude second if you wanted to go that route and search by GPS if you can't find the actual address here instead. But you've got all your basic characters that are available and then just jumping back home. So very straightforward to be able to use that. Next up, looking at audio. So audio, you've got a series of different sources that are available. So AM, FM, Sirius XM. If you had a USB stick with MP3s, you could also set yourself up that way too. So let's plug in a few seconds there. Three, two, one. And the USB device is now detected. So you've got all of these options that are available. So if we click through to the navigator to the USB device now, as you can see there. So it's really nice that you've got the option of being able to play USB and other sources that are available. You can browse to see what's available there, go to your sound settings and things like that, and then changing back to any of these other sources. So very straightforward to use this. And then you can see we've got presets along the very bottom now. So if you wanted to be able to save a station, you could tune a few different ways as well. So you could direct tune this way if you wanted to. I did mention you can also use, so the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, if you wanted to go that route instead. But once you've got the station that you'd like to save, all you're gonna do is over one of your other presets, you're just gonna press and hold in order to be able to save that preset in. So it's very straightforward there. One thing to point out is that if you look at Sirius XM, that's gonna give us a few other options. You can start the song over, which is really nice. You could also give yourself a notification bell. So if you either get the artist or the song coming up, it's going to let you know if that's happened. And then you can manage your artists or song notifications as well. So really nice if you hear a song that you love, you can save it in if you'd like. And then also have your listener history. So you can create an individual listener. Benefit there is if there are multiple people driving the vehicle, you can select your own user profile. You've got your favorites, what you've currently listened to, so your previous history, your different settings for your own unique profile. So do you wanna block out explicit content? Tune to start. Tune to start's a useful one because if you were listening to a station, turn the vehicle off, then turn it back on again, it's gonna tune right back to that station there again. And then your preset pages. I honestly always just recommend going for the max possible preset pages. And the big reason why is because if you have you know, 20, 30 different presets that you enjoy, you can see there along the bottom, mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM as well, which is great. Now, hopping back into sources, you've got a few other options. So let's say if we go back to FM for a second, you've got some advanced sound settings. So if you wanted to, you could adjust tone settings. So adjust the treble mid-range bass. Ooh, the treble is cranked. Treble down a bit, bass cranked a little bit is generally a good option, but like reset, that'll be default. So you're just gonna go out three, 
down by two, and that's just gonna generally give you some really good audio inside of this thing. Moving back, you've also got your balance and fade. So if you're the only one in the vehicle, you want it focused on you, but you can adjust where it's gonna be focused. If you've played with it too much, read his reset to bring it back to center again. Speed compensated volume. So as you go faster or slower, it's automatically gonna adjust the volume on the fly. Quantum, uh, quantum surround sound. Do you want an audio, oh, audience experience or did you want an onstage experience? And that's just gonna give you a more immersive audio experience. Uh, it's gonna be the basics of the sound settings there. Next up, actually, was that the base? That was that all of them? Oh yeah, it was, okay. So that's your audio in a nutshell. So very straightforward. Moving back home, you've now got the ability to add in a phone. So let's go through that process Search right now. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Okay, and all you're gonna do on your phone is you're gonna go into your Bluetooth settings. Oh, I gotta clean this up a little bit. And we're just waiting for, so there we go, linking Corsair to show up. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do we want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no on this one, but I mean, obviously, if it was your vehicle, you'd say yes. And it's paired perfectly. For your safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, so we are connected. Now, 911 assist came up, and I always recommend turning that one on. The big reason why is because if you're ever in an accident while you're driving, it's going to automatically try to dial 911 for you if you're in a serious accident. So I always recommend keeping that one turned on. Really useful. And then phone also supports CarPlay wirelessly, but we'll get to that one in a second. Because now that the phone's connected, you've got what's currently going on with your connection, your battery levels, and a few other things. Favorites, recent calls, contacts, and things like that. You do have the Siri Assistant and the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. If you do a longer press and hold, that's gonna activate your Siri assistant there instead. So you can see Siri's activated on the phone now. And that's just by pressing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel. So we've got that available as an option. Now, other thing, on your phone, inside of the Sync 4 media screen now for the 2023 Plus Corsair, wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. So all we have to do is hit use CarPlay, going to enable, and three, two, one. Oh, we have to go. Oh, perfect. We are fully connected. So I love it. And it's nice because we've got the split screen capability and we can kind of go up and down if we want to, to see different things. But one really nice thing is that along the very top left-hand side, we've also got this little guy and we can push out to full screen instead. I mean, look at how beautiful that looks. That's really nice. Really nice and really responsive too. That's great. Okay, so a few things. This is gonna be your home, your technical home screen. So you've got your home screen and then we've got a few icons along the side. So your icon tray is always gonna stay there. You've got your current time on your phone, your current connection level, your battery percentage, and then which map application was open last. So on this thing, you've got Apple Maps, Google Maps, and Waze, but let's say if you were using Waze, it switches out to Waze instead. This one is going to be for what's current, what radio you're currently listening to, or I should say what music source you're listening to. So whether that's music, podcasts, whatever the case may be, if you're listening to Hoopla, which is, a, it's more or less just like a library app instead, it's gonna essentially update that one. And then this bottom one is going to be a random one. So the random one is essentially gonna be things like either Skype, if you have that, WhatsApp going, Zoom, et cetera. So it's whatever your random icon is. And then this is going to bring you back to the home screen again. So no matter what page you're on, home screen to go back home or push this in order to get back to your tray icons there instead. So very straightforward. But I mean, all of the maps are very responsive. This is still a little bit of a bug on the Apple side of things. So it looks like Apple Maps still doesn't have the flexibility of going full screen, unfortunately. But Google Maps does. It's so very straightforward, but the downside is that Google Maps, not pinched to zoom, so we can adjust out this way if we want to, zoom in and out, hit done. You can search for addresses there if you'd like, or go to some other settings that are available. So change your route options, colors, and things like that. Jumping back, other one is gonna be Waze, and that's the same idea. So you've got full screen, but no drag and drop capability. You've gotta push the button along the very bottom right side, and then you can adjust that way, zoom in and out, whatever the case may be searching for addresses, etc., and then back. And then since we're hooked up over CarPlay, you could also press and hold there, and that's going to activate your Siri Assistant there as well. So very straightforward. 
Now on your phone, if you go into your general settings, you can go into CarPlay, select the vehicle, so Lincoln Corsair. You can toggle CarPlay off, you can have it forget the vehicle, or you can customize the launcher. So let's say if you have a tendency to listen to your podcast more, or you love your audiobooks, you can add those ones in. There are certain ones that you can delete. And when you delete them, it fully removes them from the screen, but it saves it along the bottom. So we could add, add them back in if we want to, but if you've, let's say, played around with it too much and you don't like what you've done, you can go to the very top, you hit reset, reset, and that's just gonna bring you right back to your home screen there instead. So it's very straightforward, but I mean, I love it. We've got so many options. You can listen to podcasts, as I mentioned. You can listen to audiobooks and things like that, whether that's through third-party services. If you wanted to listen to YouTube music and things like that, right through CarPlay, which is great. Now, you don't have to be connected to CarPlay in order to listen to audio. You could also just hook up over Bluetooth if you wanted to go that route. So if we go back home for a second, features, oh, I'm gonna go apps instead. You've got CarPlay. So you can launch back in that way if you want to. So it's very straightforward. If you were on the home screen again, a little icon there, you're gonna push that and that can also launch you back into CarPlay. So you've got a few different ways that you can get into it. But I know that's quite a little bit of information, but that's how you set up an iPhone inside of the Corsair. Next up, setting up an Android device is the exact same process. So because we've got the iPhone currently connected, what you're gonna do, you can go into settings if you want to, look at phone list and that's going to give you a few options. Now, this is actually a neat one. I'm gonna keep the screen up for a second, but what we're gonna do, we wanna just add in a phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. And same idea here, we're just waiting for Lincoln Corsair to show up. Perfect. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up, perfect. Do we want to allow contacts and For favorites safety, to sync up? Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use Sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Well, thank you. We're going to enable Android Auto right here as well. So same idea. It's working on connecting to Android Auto. Gives us a little flash on the screen to know it's going to be connecting. We're going to continue through. I mean, look at that. Three, two, one. We are fully connected here. So we've got our Android Auto here, and same idea, we, so we've got Google Maps, nice pinch to zoom capability. So that's one thing that the iPhone didn't have is that you can actually pinch to zoom Google Maps, which is great. And then very similar to the iPhone side of things, we can also go full screen. So now along the very top, you've got this little icon. You're just gonna push that in order to go full screen instead. Really, really nice and responsive. Google Maps, we can press this in order to adjust route options and things like that. And then very, oop, very similar tray icon along the side. So we've got maps, podcasts, or music, your phone, your microphone. So if you wanted to use your Google Assistant, you could do that. Or you can push this to get back out to a split screen. And then you push again in order to get back to this widgeted page instead. You could customize the screen a little bit. It's just not quite as much customization as you would have on the, uh, the iPhone side of things. But we can press map to get back there. Push map to get a split view. Go into podcasts go into phone if you want to, back into map again. So it's very straightforward. Now, I did mention, if we go back home, go into settings, phone list, there are now both phones that are connected to the vehicle, but we're currently connected to Android Auto. So you can either be connected to Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. You can't be connected to both, but there are these other icons for phone and music. So let's say if you wanted to use one phone for your phone itself, but the other phone for music, you'd have that flexibility, there we go. So it's one or the other. So you can essentially have one phone for the phone, one for music, you can have the phone not connected whatsoever, you can have one connected for music, both connected, whatever the case may be. So there are a lot of different options that you've got that are available, which is great. I love how simple that is, really cool. And then if we go phone settings, you've got both phones there, so you could look at some additional settings, so manage your contacts, set ringtones and things like that. Or if we hop back, you can also easily delete devices. So delete, that one's deleted. And then we can also go back in. Let's delete the iPhone. iPhone is now deleted as well. So very straightforward, setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the Corsair. Okay, so phone is now connected. So moving back again, 
you've got a series of settings, which we'll get to in a moment. So actually, I think that's that's next. All right, so let's jump back into settings there. So a ton of options available. Radio, we've seen a version of this before. So you've got your radio different preset pages, radio text and things like that. This will look dynamic based off of what you're currently doing for your audio. So let's say your audio, you're listening to Sirius XM now. If you were to go, oh, I'm gonna wait for that to go. If you were to go back home, go into your settings. It's now a Sirius XM button instead. And same thing, we've seen all of these different settings before. You can add in a phone. You've got all of your sync navigation settings. So same idea, we've already seen all of these when we cover it off navigation. Different sound settings that we've already seen. So to uh, tone settings, treble mid-range bass, things like that. Different vehicle settings. So 30 minute max idle, with that one turned on, what's going to happen is after 30 minutes, the vehicle's automatically gonna turn off. If it's turned on, if it's turned off, then the vehicle's just never gonna turn off instead. Rear occupant alert is a useful one. So especially if you have young kids or a pup in the back. So as you go to exit your vehicle, it's gonna give you an alert. It's gonna give you an alert and the horn, nothing's gonna happen. And then you can say whether or not a child seat's been installed. So it's a good safety setting to make sure that you haven't forgotten a little one back there or you know, furry friend, whatever the case may be. But you do have the flexibility of toggling the system off if you wanted to. Easy entry exit. What that means is with the setting turned on and you turn the vehicle off, it's going to lower the seat and back it up in order for you to get out of the seat a little bit easier. You've got serial number, remote start. So whether that's through the key fob, if we're remote starting this way. So on the fob, if you wanted to remote start, all you're gonna do is press the lock button once and the circle button twice in order to be able to remote start. So you can toggle the system off if you want to. And then if we have remote start going, is it going to let the vehicle determine what the cabin temperature should be? Or is it based off of your last settings instead? Next up, seats and steering wheel. Same idea, do we want the vehicle determining if the heated or ventilated first row seats or the heated steering wheel should turn on, yes or no? And then do we want it running for 5, 10, or 15 minutes? Next up, you've got windows. So you've got the flexibility of using the key fob in order to be able to remote open and close the windows. So let's hop outside and I'll show you how that process works. In order to roll them down, you press the unlock button twice, and then on the second button press, you're gonna hold. So we're gonna go one, two, and hold. Down they go. You can press the lock button to stop it part way and then just double press again in order to restart. Back down they go. And then you can also roll them back up the same way. So on the key fob there, same idea, but you're gonna press the lock button now twice. And then on the second button press, you're gonna hold. So you're gonna go one, two and hold. Back up they go. Same idea, you can press the unlock to pause it part way or let it run through the full cycle there again. So, so that is really cool. And I love that it is right through the fob there for both open and close. So beautiful on Lincoln's part to include that. Moving back, you've got wipers. Courtesy wipe means that if we've got a wipe cycle going, what it's going to do is it's going to wait until the liquid's cleared and then go one more time to make sure no extra liquids on the windshield. Rain sensing wipers, yes or no, and then rear wiper when in reverse. So if the vehicle was in reverse and our front wipers were going, it would automatically turn on our rear wipers as well. Back up, power lift gate. So you could power mode with hands-free foot activated capability or just a manual mode instead. So if you wanted to manually lift the lift gate up yourself. So you've got a few different options that are available, which is kind of neat because we can go all three. So we can power up, you can go hands-free, or you can just have power instead, which is really useful. From there, also some options for lighting. So auto high beam means that if our high beams are turned on and a vehicle's oncoming, it's going to dim the high beams for us and bring them back up. Welcome lighting is gonna be approach lighting on the outside and then auto lamp delay. So when we go to lock the vehicle, do the lamps just turn off? Do they stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, or 120 seconds? Next up, options for locks. Auto unlock, so do we want the doors unlocking when the vehicle is parked? Mislock chirp and auto wheel feedback and things like that. So if we go to shut a door and it's not fully closed, it's gonna give us audible feedback and let us know. And then when we remote unlock, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's side door? Intelligent access means that as long as we've got the fob on us, you can slide your hand in the one of the doors and then the doors automatically go into unlock for us. Backup start pass keys. So what we have to do 
set up the Lincoln Way app, and then once the Lincoln Way app is set up, it's gonna give you the option of going through and setting up a backup start password instead. So one great thing there is that you do have the flexibility of using your phone as a key once you've got the Lincoln Way app set up. And then if you don't have your key fob on you and your phone's died, you can get into the vehicle using the five digit pad along the side view door and then enter in your backup start password in order to start the vehicle up instead. Next up, some different options for vehicle settings. So did mention you can change hours, minutes, whatever the case may be, AM, PM, if you prefer that military time, so that 24 hour mode, and then auto time zone update. So you can see there, it told us what time zone we're in. So we can get it to automatically update the time for us instead if you want to. Personal profiles is a useful one because there are so many things. So what you're gonna do is you enter in your name, Bob, definitely not my name, but you can now set up your memory profiles if you want to. So if you have your perfect position set up, memory one is now linked to Bob. You can also set it up for your key phone, uh, for your key fob, your phone, both. You can link everything into your own personal profile, which is amazing. So that's gonna remember all of your settings. It's gonna remember your seat, your steering wheel, all of your presets and everything. If you want to, you can also get rid of that. You can go to a guest profile there instead. You can add in more profiles. There are a ton of different options that are available. So I love that you've got the flexibility or you can just turn personal profiles off. Honestly, if you've got multiple people driving, it is really useful because like I said, you can have all of your presets set up, your phone and things like that based off of your own individual key fob, which is amazing. General settings, so do you wanna go either English, Spanish or French? You wanna go Celsius or Fahrenheit? How do you want it measured out? So either miles per gallon, kilometers, etc. Tire pressure, do you want a PSI or bar? Touchscreen beep, so the beeping that we get as we move through. If that drives you nuts, you could technically turn off that beep if you want to, and then you can reset the vehicle on top of that. Moving off to the side, display settings. So in as big, as bright, as beautiful as this thing is, you could go to a calming screen instead if you want to. There is a button down the center stack. We could also press that in order to turn on the calming screen instead. You can adjust the brightness that way if you'd like. And then you've got the mode setting. So technically this is the daytime mode because of how bright it is outside, but you can permanently lock it into either the daytime or the nighttime mode. So it just darkens the screen up a little bit. Auto mode means it's gonna flip us between day or night, just depending on how bright it is. Driver seat. Now this one you may or may not have. So this one has the optional 24 way massage chair seats. So it gives us a lot of other flexibility. Like there are some different ways that we can adjust the seat along the driver's side door, but there are so many other ways and like different things that we can adjust. You can adjust the butt cushion to be a little bit more comfortable for you. You can have the seat hug you a little bit more if you want to. You can adjust individual parts of the lumbar support, upper back, lower back, or you can turn on massage capability with a few different options. So upper rolling, lower rolling, circular, circular cushion. You can select how intense you want the massage to be as well, or you can just talk, turn it off. So it's a really, really useful one if you go on longer distance trips. I always recommend turning that one on. It's just really comfortable, but that's the same for the driver and the passenger side. Connectivity is where we're gonna go to. Big one here is change our vehicle name. So if you wanted to set it up for, rather than having Lincoln Corsair to be your own unique name, that's where we're going in order to make it happen. So it's very straightforward. So under connectivity, Bluetooth, vehicle name, you can change out your vehicle name that way, or you can turn Bluetooth off completely so you can't connect your phone whatsoever. Connected vehicle features. So do you wanna share your telematics, vehicle analytics, and things like that with Lincoln? That one's a matter of preference. I personally turn it off, but that's gonna be a matter of what you'd like to do wireless app projection with different options for password and security and things like that. And then your Wi-Fi network. Do you want to do you want to connect to a network at home? I definitely recommend that, especially when you look at your software updates. So you want to make sure your updates are turned on. And big reason why is because like this can take a long time to update the vehicle for us, like sometimes three, four hours. So you can schedule it to come on at a certain time of the day. So it's automatically going to download the update file and then install it for you as well vehicle hotspot. So this thing does act as, or does have the option, I should say, to act as a wireless hotspot for up to 10 devices. We can toggle the system off if we want to, but if the settings turned on, we can look at data usage, different settings that are available as well. So if you wanted to edit things out like your hotspot visibility, the name, 
the connection password and things like that, you've got that flexibility. Now, one thing about the vehicle hotspot is that you do need a data only plan in order to be able to get started. So in Canada, I believe that's through the Bell network, but you do have that available so you can connect, activate, or you can manage your current connection as well. So it is really neat that you've got that available as an option. If you've got multiple people that are gonna be in the vehicle, it is a pretty useful one to set up. Also some options for Lincoln Assistant. So when you press the voice command prompt on the steering wheel, you see there you've got a ton of different options that are available but we can also have it listen for a wake word. So rather than pressing the voice command prompt, we can get it to listen for, okay, Lincoln. And you can see there, it opens this up instead. So you've got that option. So advanced mode means we won't get as many notifications as we go. Phone confirmation, do you wanna call such and such person? Yes or no. Your command list is this list that pops up. So whether or not that one shows up is a matter of preference and then your command help. So this is just some of what you can do with this. So I love it because we can adjust the climate if we want to. We can adjust our media, navigation, phone. There are so many different options. So I honestly just recommend when you get your Lincoln, sit in it for a little bit and learn the voice assistant, all the different things you can do, because it is really, really nice what you can do. Different options for ambient lighting. So ambient light does show in different parts of the vehicle yellows, purples, greens, oh, that's kind of neat. And then you can adjust the intensity by dragging up and down there as well. Next up, 911 assist, which we've already seen that one. You need to have a phone connected in order for that to work. And then valet mode. So if you enter in a four digit number, it's gonna lock out the entire screen so people can't use it until they re-enter that four digit number. It's gonna be a matter of preference whether or not you use that one, but it's a pretty nice safety setting. Next up, series of different features that are available. You've got driver assistance and ton of options. So the auto hold setting, with that one turned on, if the car's in drive, you come to a stop and then take your foot off the brake, the vehicle's not gonna move. Adaptive cruise control gives us a few options. So you can either set it for normal cruise if you want to. Adaptive, you've got lane centering, in lane positioning, different prompts and things like that. So the adaptive cruise is a really nice one because it's that set and forget it cruise. Lane centering means the vehicle is going to keep us perfectly balanced in our lane as we go. Lane, what's the other big one? Lane change assist. So once you're, I believe it's over 40 kilometers or 50 kilometers, oh, okay, it doesn't say. So it's over 50 kilometers an hour, I believe. But as long as you're over 50, you hit your left versus right. And as long as the lane's cleared, it's automatically going to move you into a different lane instead, which is amazing. Predictive speed assist is if the vehicle recognizes your current road speed, and then let's say if we have tolerance of zero. So let's say you're going 60, and then the road speed goes from 60 down to 30, and it recognizes it, it's automatically gonna lower you to 30 instead. But we can select how many kilometers or miles per hour, we can go over, under, whatever the case may be, without it adjusting for us. So really, really neat that you've got that as an option. And you can toggle that thing off if you want to. It's just a really nice one to actually have on. Moving back, driver assistance. You've also got speed limit assist. So if you're going too fast, it can give you a warning. Lane keeping system works three different ways. So on alert, if you start to veer over without signaling, it's gonna give you a steering wheel shake. The aid is gonna nudge you back into your lane and the alert and aid will do both. So you do have to make sure that that's turned on using the button on the tip of the left stick. And then the intensity of the steering wheel shake when it does happen. From there, pre-collision assist. So if we're potentially going to get into collision, the vehicle can help us with braking and then evasive steering, oh, evasive steer assist essentially means that the vehicle's, the steering wheel is gonna go into like a hypersensitivity mode in order to be able to stiffen things up and get out of the way of a potential collision a little bit easier. Oh, that's the one we were just in. Oh, or you can turn that system off as you saw there. Rear view camera delay, blind spot system. So if somebody's enter the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, it's gonna highlight orange in our side view mirrors, letting us know of a potential collision. Cross traffic alert. If somebody's coming perpendicular from us as we back up, so from the left or right, it's gonna let us know of a potential collision and then it can actively break for us as well. And then same idea, we can turn any of these settings off if we want to. Next up is access. Big one there is just the charge port light. So very useful if you've got the hybrid because you can see how much charge you've actually got on the outside. Departure and comfort's a nice one. With the hybrid version is where you're gonna get this setting. So let's say if you tend to go to the, leave the same time every day. So I don't know, maybe Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and you leave at seven o'clock in the morning. And when you leave, you want the vehicle to be nice and cool. 
you've got that as an option. So you save in. And what's going to happen is it's going to automatically precondition the vehicle to be nice and cool for you at 7 o'clock a.m. And then same idea. You can adjust it that same way. So let's say if you leave work at 5 o'clock p.m. every day and you want it maybe a little bit medium, you've got that flexibility. So at that time, vehicle's automatically going to be either hot or cold just based off of whatever you've selected there. You can clear all if you want to, and you can select multiple days, multiple times, and things like that for each one, which is really, really cool. Next up are gonna be charge settings. So charge settings, you can see currently charging up, and we're at 18% as of right now. So we started charging at 1246, and it's saying that it's gonna be 100% charged at 409. Different charge locations. And this is a really cool one. So the bottom here, you can see departure and comfort. We can hop back in, or charge locations. So let's add one in. This is our current location that we're charging. We can name it however we want to, but we can select the charge. So from 50 to 100%. So how much do we want the vehicle to charge up at this specific location? And then once we select that, we can select our charge windows. So let's say we don't want to charge until, I don't know, between 3 a, or 4 a.m. and 7 p.m. You've got that flexibility. You can adjust out from there if you want to. You can select oh, two individual charge windows as well or you can just go the whole way, you can delete, just do a drag and drop. So when do you want this thing actually charging? So if you wanted to charge later on at night, you do have that flexibility, which is really, really cool. So if you wanna charge when electricity rates are gonna be a little bit cheaper, you've got that flexibility. If you hit continue, it's gonna give you a display of what you've done. If you hit save, it saved it up. And that's one really cool thing because like once we have our charge location set up, we've got the flexibility of selecting whether like what day, what time, whatever the case may be that this thing is actually charging. Really, really useful. You can see what's going on with your power flow, really just a little bit of graphics. So you can see that we're currently charging up, which is kind of neat. Back from there, you've got a digital owner's manual. So if let's say this video didn't give you all the information that you're looking for and you need that one specific thing, like maybe you're getting a wonky message on your cluster screen, or if you want to know how often you should be doing oil changes, you can hop in and then it's going to give you all the different options that are available there. So you can do a search by looking there, visual searches, videos, and things like that. All of your climate control settings are along the very bottom. So you can see driver passenger side, heated ventilated seats. This is gonna look slightly different just depending on what different options you've got available inside of your vehicle. But you can see there, adjust there. If you leave it, it'll go away. Same idea, driver passenger side, we can go heated ventilated, drag up or down to go for those options instead. Same idea with your dual zone climate control. What temperature do you want it set at for the driver and for the passenger side? So different options that are available there. Do you want to turn on your heated steering wheel? What do you want your fan speed to be? Do you want it going to your windshield face feet? Some sort of combination of all the above. Do we want to run the auto air refresh there instead? So you can see there we can force a refresh as well. Drop that down max windshield defroster, rear window defroster, turn on the air conditioning. And then actually one other thing, if we're in this mode here, and if passenger side is set something to something different than the driver, if you hit dual, it's gonna default the passenger to whatever the driver side is as well. Or you can just toggle the system off there if you want, easily toggle it back on, and then drop back down again. You are gonna be push button start, all of our piano key shifters, volume rocker, and then a series of other buttons that are available here too. So this one is for Park Assist. Using the Park Assist system inside of the Lincoln Corsair is a very straightforward process. So let me show you how it works. What we're gonna do, right down the center stack, there's a little P button. You're gonna push that P button and it's either navigate to parking or park assistance. We want park assistance, so we're gonna go there. And you can either have the vehicle help you out with parallel parking, perpendicular parking, or parallel park out. So right now we're gonna go and have it help us out with parallel parking first. And you can either use your left turn stick to go left or right. And that's gonna dictate whether it's going to look on the left or the right hand side as we go. So for this instance, I hope it picks this up, but I'm gonna go for the right hand side here. So all we're gonna do, start driving forward and it's gonna scan as we go. So we've gotta start driving and then it should hopefully pick up this as a spot. Beautiful, like I glove. Next thing it wants us to do is release the steering wheel. So hands are off the wheel. 
got to push the end button to put ourselves into neutral and then you're going to take your foot off the brake and all you're going to do is press and hold the p button that's down the center stack there so vehicle's going to start backing us up there oh i hope this guy sees me perfect okay good 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 good, good. like i love oh this is beautiful look at this literally perfect there's a little counter along the top of the screen there to let us know how far it is into the process that it's taking us right now but it's pulling us forward a little bit and then you can see the counter there but it's going to start beeping because we're getting close and then it'll stop for us didn't even beep it just stopped for us so it's that simple using the parallel parking system and all it does like all we have to do is shift ourselves into neutral hands off the steering wheel and you're set to go if you feel a little bit uncomfortable at any point during the process, you could hit the brake in order to stop it as well. You could technically take over, but the system works incredibly well. So next up, we're parallel parked, so we want it to help us out with parallel park out. Let's get it to help us on the left side. There's nothing too, too close to me behind, but I mean, if you were in a tighter space, it'd make it a lot easier, or a lot more difficult, I should say, for the car. But because there's nobody behind me, it's going to be relatively easy. So what we're doing, we're just putting ourselves in neutral, foot off the brake, pressing and holding the P button. It's going to back me up. And the idea there is that I can then get out either on the left or the right side a little bit easier. So same idea. It's counting us down. And once we hit that max counter there, it's going to crank the steering wheel for me. And then it's saying we can now take control. So all you have to do, foot on the brake. You're going to hit drive. And all you're going to do with the wheel cranked, with the vehicle had it, you're going to drive yourself forward. So again, very straightforward, very, very simple. I love how easy that is. And then the next one, what we're going to do is let's look for perpendicular parking. So we're going to hit the little P button, park assist. We want it to help us out with perpendicular parking now. And on this one, let's get it to go onto the left side. Let's give it a challenge. All right, so there's a spot here that it can fit. Let's see if it recognizes it. Okay, no. Oh, it did. Oh, bugger. Okay, I didn't think it was going to pick that one up. All right, so same idea. It found the spot. You know what we have to do? Shifting it to neutral, foot off the brake, pressing and holding the little P button there, and vehicle's going to do its thing. Very nice. Same idea. If you wanted to, you're not comfortable, you could keep your foot on the brake as well. But, I mean, the vehicle is very smart from that perspective. Like... Ooh, you are getting close, feller. But again, same idea. It's getting close, but it's still really nice. It's pulling us forward, and same idea. We've got our count timers going on there as well. Yeah, it's going to start backing me up now to get us into this spot. Look at this. Beautiful. Nice and balanced. Here we go boom you're done finished parallel parking perpendicular parking parallel park out this thing has a lot of different options that are available and then we're gonna go camera button so you've got your full 360 camera there so 360 view which looks amazing but we can go 360 view front partial view front 180 view backup view back to 360 or you can just cancel it out instead back down you can adjust your four-way blinkers you can turn the screen into a calming mode instead turn off traction control and then you've also got your max windshield defroster moving down so there is this little tray you're going to push in order to be able to close push to open but you can see there wireless charge pad so if you've got a phone that supports wireless charging we can just drop in and it's going to take a second for it to start charging but one cool thing is that when it's it's charging there it tells us right on the media screen there too that we've got a phone that's actively charging just so you don't forget that your phone's there but that is available as an option which is kind of cool and then a few usb power points so you can see there you've got a usb usb type c and then really nice turn that volume off and like i said you can just push in order to close like could you technically pull yes but you're going to break the mechanism that's in there by doing that moving down series of cup holders and the cup holders do feature ambient light so you can see the ambient light going there and then a series of different drive modes that are available 
All right, so you've got slippery mode, which is gonna play with your traction stability control. There's conserve, you've got excite, which is more of like a sport mode instead. So it holds on, holds on to the RPMs to give you a sportier performance. And that is a beautiful mode. Normal mode, you've got preserve EV, which is gonna force just the gas engine to go. Now, if you just did have the gas engine, so if you had the two liter turbo instead, that mode wouldn't be there. But in the hybrid, you can force EV, uh, preserve EV, which means that it's gonna charge up the battery as you drive. You can go pure EV too. So if you've got all electric miles that are available, you can force it to use your strictly electric miles instead. Now, one thing, if you've got that pure EV setting going and you gun it, it's gonna bring the engine back on again. But you've got the flexibility of selecting, do you just wanna be in electric? Do you wanna be in gas? Do you want the vehicle to determine which mode you're in on top of that? So there are a lot of really cool settings that are available there. You've got your park brake, little coin holder, and then the armrest that does feature a 12 volt power point, and then a little removable tray on top of that. Okay, shifting up overhead. So this thing has the frameless auto dimming rear view mirror. So it's automatically going to dim out just depending on how bright it is outside. Moving up from there, series of other controls that are available. So some cabin control lights, and then there's also a few controls for our shade and then for our sunroof. So this one, single button press opens it up about halfway. Secondary button press, opens it up that last little bit. Really nice. And then you can either vent out if you want to, or open the whole roof up. So really nice, I love it. And then from there, you could single button press in order to be able to close it. And same idea with the shade. So we just single button press to close the shade halfway. secondary button press in order to close it the rest of the way. It's funny, every time I'm in a vehicle that's got a sunroof, I, I, I usually don't actually use the sunroof when I'm in one. I just like to open it up so you can see what's going on outside. Matter of preference, but the panoramic sunroof is available and it's dual pane and the whole thing doesn't open. It just opens up the view so, so nicely. You've also got typical Lincoln styling with sunglasses holder. Visor as a business card holder with the home link system built in. There also is a little business card holder up along the side, vanity mirror with lights built in on top of that. And then this thing's extending out. Oh yeah, blocking all of the sun. I wasn't sure about that last little bit, but I mean, just the tip and it's, it's covering off everything that might be hitting your face, which is good. But this is really nice. Oh, you know, it's, <laughs> I'm so used to being in vehicles where I adjust it on this side there, but I'm going to set this seat up for myself being six feet tall. Oh, there we go. Perfect. Okay. But I've got a great amount of knee space, great amount of foot space. And I mean, up overhead, I'm sitting at about an inch and a half, teetering on two inches of head space there. So pretty respectable amount, which is pretty good. And one really nice thing is that the seats are also reclinable. Like we've got a 60-40 split for the bench, but there's a lever along our left side. We would pull that in order to fold the seat forwards, but you can also very slightly recline it too, which is kind of nice. And then a nicer thing is that if you need a little bit more space, either for the cargo area or for the people that are in the second row, there's a bar in between our legs and we can slide the seat forwards or backwards a tiny little bit. Three full-size versions of me would be super tight in the third row, but if you've got kids, your anchor points are down along the bottom, top tethers along the back of the seats there too. You are gonna find some cup holders back here. So that's gonna be standard, built right into the seat. Behind the first row seats, there are some little pockets, so like mesh pockets behind both the driver passenger side. Behind the armrest, there are some controls for second row heated seats. And that's just gonna be for the outboard seat. So you don't have the option to get this middle seat heated. Whether you get the second row heated seats or not, gonna depend on which trim level of the vehicle that you're in. But a lot of things are streamlined, so most of these things are gonna be available in either the highest available Grand Touring or the reserve models of the Corsair. There's a little basic vent control, and then moving down, there are a few power points. So, moving in, you've got two USB Type-C power points, and then off to, ooh, even, no way. There are four USB Type-C power points back here. 
I was expecting something else in one of those, but yeah, so four USB type C, there's a USB type C in the center and then a USB type A there as well. So literally PowerPoints all over the place, which is kind of cool. Nice. And this one also does have the finished floors, which is great. So it's got the thermoplastic rubber trays right from the factory and they look really solid. Hope to learn a thing or two. And as I mentioned, you can find the build links for this specific one and everything else you need to know down in the description of the video. But if you found this one useful, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and until I see you next time, take care.